It's quite a weird day because when you mostly come here throughout the day or throughout the week, there is nothing happening at this area. It's very, very quiet. If you come tomorrow morning, though, from 5 o'clock until half past 9 in the morning, there is a huge open air fish market on which you can buy a fish, fruit, vegetables, plants, and even live animals as well, like bunny rabbits and chickens. You can purchase at the fish market. At a price which almost never changes, it's always 15 euros. Now, uh, this area itself, it works on a Dutch auction model. Were they? Yeah, the ladies, they were all men in the, in the big cars. In the big the cars, yeah, the, the ladies were in the little cars behind. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's weird. I don't know. I've never understood the rationale of getting married and then making lots of noise in the streets. I don't know. Yeah. So, that's the. Anyways, I'm going to take about the fish market. Uh, so this area itself uh, will actually function according to the Dutch auction stars. If you come over here, if you come in the early hours of the morning at 5, the prices are at the highest. The longer you wait though, to buy, the more and more they reduce the, uh, the quantity that you give you, or more they increase the, uh, the quantity, so you get better value for your money. This means the best time to come to the fish market to buy stuff is at half past 9 on a Sunday morning where you can buy upwards of 5 kilograms of fish for 15 euros. It's a really, really low price itself. And my wife and I came a while ago to the stuff. The only thing is you have to use it quite quickly because the stuff they're selling here is on the brink of spoiling. And so you have to actually either freeze the stuff or use it very, very quickly to eat the fish itself to your friends and family at home. So you can kind of have like a fish barbecue where you actually make a lot of fish for lots of people inside your home. Or we do is to freeze it and then to use it over the course of about a month or so. You can get a lot of value here at the Hamburg fish market itself. This is the one way of seeing the fish market, either waking up very early on a Sunday morning. You have to get here by half past nine to actually buy things. You have to close your shop for sale half past nine on Sunday morning. Normally people do not go, they keep on selling until about 10 o'clock in the morning itself. And this is where you can get the best bargains on the fish market from half past nine to 10 o'clock. The other way is to wake up very, very early on a, sorry, to actually stay awake all night uh, on the river by itself, to come down to the fish market for Hamburg's coolest after party directly afterwards, where you have live music at five o'clock on a Sunday morning, and beers you can enjoy all the way until 10 o'clock in the morning inside that major beer hall you can see on my left side. This is Hamburg's coolest after party. So this does make for a very eclectic mix of different people who come here in the morning. You have the 67-year-old retiree, the pensioner, who's coming to buy her groceries this coming week, mingling together with a 22-year-old drunken Erasmus exchange student who's just come off their feet drunk from the Reaper Bunch and are coming for the after party in Hamburg. Nowhere in other places of the city you see these two people together at the same place at the same time, making this a very unique atmosphere you can find at the fish market. And uh, the salespeople and the vendors are very interesting as well. They have these things called market streamers. You will literally scream their produce at you. So you've got this guy in a big minivan who is screaming at the top of his lungs, food, 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 food. All the while he's slapping his hand on his back. The longer you wait, the more you get food from these years. And then you get really great value at that location as well. Some of them also have comedy shows they run through as well. So you've got this Dutch guy who sells plants and he is hilarious to go and listen to. So it's like comedians who actually will make jokes with you trying to sell as much as they can over a short space of time. It's a really cool atmosphere you can find over here. Okay, now this part of Hamburg though never actually used to belong to the city. It belonged to another country in fact, namely Denmark. It used to have their second biggest city founded directly outside the city walls of Hamburg, which was known as Altona. And also it was never really a liked neighbor of Hamburg due to the fact they were initially founded to compete with Hamburg's own fish market over the course of the 16th century meaning Hamburg and Altona were always confusing with each other. And this is the reason why legend says Hamburg gave Altona the name in German, Altona, 
This means all too close was Denmark to Hamburg, and this was the original name given on parts of itself. Um, the incorporated side of Hamburg in 1947 with the large Hamburg hold was initiated over the course of the rise of the Third Reich to power. And that's an increase in Hamburg size and giving us one extra district, namely Altena, which is one of the seven boroughs of districts of Hamburg we currently have inside the city. Okay. Now, needless to say, between Hamburg on my right and Denmark on the left, we have the small hill face between the two, which was known in Hamburg as the Hamburger Berg, the Hamburg Mountains, what we called it. And Hamburg doesn't really have much in the way of mountains. If you walk around the city centre, the highest point we have in the city centre of Hamburg is located at Schmerzmann on the Dornplatz, which is 6.5 meters above sea level. But if you there, it is due to acute altitude sickness you are experiencing Hamburg city centre. So you can imagine this was not really a mountain per se, but it was a small uh, yeah, uh, incline or a hill between Hamburg and Altenheim. And this was the original name of St. Pauli. So it was actually named Hamburger Berg. When we got the first church place here in the 1800s, it takes over the new name of the church, St. Pauli itself, the new name of the area. The original place was called the Hamburger Berg. And what happened is, over the course of the 1800s, Hamburg chose to flatten out the mountain that ran between the city outside of Hamburg to create a free shooting range against the Danish invaders. Should Denmark ever choose to invade Hamburg again, Hamburg was pre prepared with cannons and their guns and rifles were aimed down this way at the Danish so they could actually mow them down.